I've had this crystal for nearly 30 years. Its first use was in a VXO direct conversion transceiver. With careful adjustment of values, I was able to get it to operate over a 15 kHz range on 7 MHz. I made the transceiver into something else and this crystal became surplus. Much later on, I experimented with one transistor transmitter projects, just like you've seen in the last couple of videos. That proved to be the crystal's downfall. That's because with one transistor transmitters, where the single transistor works as hard as possible to give you the best output power, the current going through the crystal is quite high. So high that it can damage the crystal. That's what's happened here. Because I had nothing to lose, I sawed the crystal apart to have a look inside it. There's what looks like a pencil mark on the crystal. I'm not sure if that's original or part of the damage. And if you look carefully, you can see that the crystal disc has a chip in it. And when you look through the middle, some light passes through. Anyway, that's not what this video is about. Instead, I'll describe a simple way of testing a crystal. The best way, of course, is to build a small crystal oscillator circuit so you can verify that it's oscillating. But if you don't want to, this arrangement can work without any extra components. All you need is an HF transceiver or general coverage receiver. Here's the circuit, very simple, with the crystal just in line between the antenna and the receiver. If you wanted to build a test jig, all you'd need would be two SO239 sockets and some leads going to the crystal under test. This is the antenna connection for the FT817. This is another antenna connection. It goes through a switch box to my HF antenna. Though you don't actually really need the box. I'm just using this as a coax cable connector. The earth connections are joined. And this is the antenna input to the transceiver. And the center connection from the coax that goes to the antenna. Here again is the crystal I blew up when testing the one transistor transmitter. The same fate befell two of these four crystals. Though I was using two in parallel, that wasn't enough for the high current drawn by the transmitter. It wouldn't have helped either that these are very small crystals and their current capacity would have been low. I will try each crystal on the testing jig so you can tell which ones are faulty and which ones are okay. Here's our first crystal. It's one of those cheap crystals for 7023. If you tune across the band, you'll hear a big increase in noise around the crystal's fundamental marked frequency. The crystal is operating as a crude narrow bandpass filter. Now I've got the larger crystal that I blew up and you can see that when I tune across its resonant frequency supposed to be 7020 and don't hear any increase in noise or signal. The same is true for one of the smaller crystals that I destroyed. Try another working crystal and there's again a big increase in signal passing through it. To summarise, this is a quick way of testing a crystal. All you need is an HF receiver capable of tuning through the crystal's fundamental frequency. An ability to test crystals like this is particularly useful if you enjoy building small transmitters that are likely to destroy them.